and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Now, yesterday, where she was a few days ago, I thought, summer's coming in the Southern Hemisphere. I need to go online and get myself a new AXN because the AXN is a fantastic model. I've reviewed it on this channel. My build videos have been seen dozens of times by people all around town. So it was a very popular model. And there's good reason for that because the AXN is such a versatile model. I've thermal sawed mine. You know, I've had like 40 minute flights out of a 20 second motor run just by hooking thermals here in the spring and the summer. And yet I've flown it at over 100 miles an hour in gale force winds in a tropical cyclone. All those videos are on my XJet channel. Go and have a look at them if you want to see them. So it's a really versatile model. It's, you know, hard to beat. So I thought, I'll go online, I'll buy a new one, new Christmas present for myself. There we go. But tragedy. Dun, dun, dun. I couldn't find any for sale. It looks like they're not making them anymore. What? A fantastic model like the AXN has been discontinued. Maybe it has, maybe it hasn't. Maybe the, the shops were just out of stock, but oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Well, maybe there's a replacement for the AXN. Uh, a lot of people have bought the Bixlers, of course, because Hobby King pushed those really hard. And the Bixlers are a fine model, but never spun my wheels, never got me excited. I never really thought they were what I wanted. They're a little bit bulky. They're just not as versatile. The extra wing area makes them a bit more prone to being blown around in the wind. And they're a little bit weaker in the front where you do your landings on the nose, you know? Um, so, mm, I don't know. On the plus side, the Bixler's got more space so you can fit FPV gear in it more easily. And it is a Hobby King model, so it's readily available. They're very, really out of stock. But I thought, there must be another alternative. And today, we're going to look at one and see whether it can be son of AXN, whether it can take the place of the fantastic AXN. Will it make me happy? Let's find out. Well, the model I'm talking about, of course, is the Dynam Hawk Spy. Is this the, the right way? No, that way. That way? That way? Can you see it? There it is. It looks a bit like an AXN, doesn't it? There's not a lot difference. It's got a high mounted motor behind the wing, which is great because you don't break propellers. It's got elliptical dihedral on the wings, which means it's nice and stable. Um, the front, it's got a canopy. It's got a pilot. It's got a pilot. So many models. I see models entered into you know, world-class scale competitions, and they don't have pilots. I see planes flying without pilots. How does that work? No, pilots are really good. I love pilots. This also has the advantage of the AXN that you can put wheels on it if you want to. <laughs> if you want to. Why, you, why would you want to? I don't know. It's just another thing to knock off when I do my landings. But here we go. This is the Dynam, as it says over here, the Hawk Sky version 2, version 2 I might add. Now, I did have a quick look at a Hawk Sky version 1 many years ago. And it was crap, to be honest, it was total crap. It was very poorly engineered, very poorly thought out, and that the, the rudder didn't even center properly because there was too much drag on the servos because of the wire push rod. Ah, it wasn't very good. So I hope this is better. I hope it's better. I hope it's going to be the new AXN, at least for me. So let's have a look at what's in the box, and let's throw it together, and let's give it a fly, see if it really can replace the AXN. And one of the first things I noticed with this model is it has on the box Expert Level 2. It looks like a simple plane to fly easily. I hope it's not as hard to fly as the box might suggest. That would not be good at all. So, uh, you know, we'll find out shortly. But here we go. It comes with instructions. Ooh, everyone loves instructions. I mean, that's pretty good. The, the, again, it's just printed sheet. But these things, they're not, you don't have to be a rocket surgeon to put them together. <laughs> have a look at this. I hope you can see this. Look at this. I don't know. It has guide for how to fly. You just move the stick this way? Well, I don't know. Um, it always makes me laugh when I see that. Um, if you're at this stage of learning, you really should, you know, get someone to give you a hand. Um, you shouldn't be learning it from a brochure. But there we go, that's the thing. And also, of course, it comes with stickers. Everybody loves stickers. Look, a whole screen full of stickers. I don't think I'll use those. I hate stickers on models. I love stickers for other things, but not on models. You notice I'm not showing you the box because it's buried in the crap on my bench. Wings, it has wings, yeah, everyone needs wings. These are not as big as the Bixler wings, but they are bigger than the AXN, AXN wings, I think. And they come in plastic bags. I have the, the plug and fly version, so I have to put a receiver in it, but the servos and everything are pre-installed. Push rods pre-installed. This is actually a whole lot better than the AXN. Let me get a knife. Um, oh, I think I, damn, my knife's in the other room. We will make do with a pair of side cutters, because that's what we do here. The bag is very strong, I might say. If you're looking for a bag, buy one of these. Here we go. Let's have a look at the wing. Yeah, that's nice. Woo. I hope they've exercised those EPP hinges because, or EPO hinges, because otherwise it'll be a bit stiff, but the servos are installed. Saves you all that hassle. Wires are run. Of course, the AXN, you had to do all this yourself if you bought the, the plug and fly version. No, the AR, yeah. 
the ARF, ARF version, uh, but it was quite good. I, I quite like ARF, but this seems good. There's no slop in the horns. There's no slop in the linkages. It's got a clippy clippy thing for holding the wings on. So it looks like, it looks like it could be a really nice thing. It's got a, ooh, can you hear this? It made some cracking noises and the foam's lifting a bit there. I'll look a closer at that. It's a cap over the spar. The spar seems to run out too. Exactly, oh my goodness. Oh dear, the spar runs out to there. It doesn't run further out. We'll see if the wing breaks when I do some high speed pullouts anyway. So this will be worth watching, won't it? And we have, of course, a protruded carbon rod, just like the AXM. But this is this one's designed to have the wings come off and on. The AXM was really better if you glued the wings together. So that's a bonus. Um, here we have the elevator and the vertical stab. Um, these ones you have to obviously put horns on and things. A bit of glue involved, I think. So have a look. We get glue. Here's a box. Woo, here's a box. What's in this box? In this box we have the canopy and the pilot. You've got to do that yourself. More stickers. More stickers in there. Okay. There's the wheels. I, I think I know. Wheel. Let's, what will we do with the wheels? Let's take care of those. Um, oh, more paperwork. What have we got? Oh, ESC manual. That... <laughs> That old thing's, this is the ESC manual, honestly. <laughs> Do you really need that much documentation for an ESC? I don't think so, but we'll find out. Um, anything else? Is there any glue in here? Oh yeah, wait a minute, there's some more stuff in here. We've got screws, nuts, bolts, propellers, and two tubes of that really cool glue, and a spinner, it's got a spinner. Why? I don't know, but it's got a spinner, and two props. A uh, really small shaft on that motorbike. Look at that. We'll find out. Hey, it's in a small shaft. And a tail wheel. Woo, okay. And then, of course, the bit that everyone wants to see because this is what makes it what it is that is the fuselage. All these bags are sealed, so you know you're getting totally fresh. It's going to be fresh. You won't get a stale one. Hang on. Oh, I've got to work out more. <clears throat> got to work out more. Here we go. Here is. The fuselage, now it's quite a bit taller, deeper, it looks more like a Bixler than an AXM, doesn't it? But, is that magnets? Yeah, there we go. Servos are pre-installed on a plywood tray, that's where your wheels go if you're stupid enough to use them. Um, oh, I have to say this does look quite good, the foam is quite dense, so it should be quite strong. Um, that plywood plate in there is going to make it a lot stronger in the front, I think, than the AXM was. Which is a good thing, because everyone customised their AXM by changing that. Here's the motor. It's one of those pancakey ones, is it? No, it's not. It's quite a decent size motor. Push rod, push rod, there's no, ooh. There's no clevis on this one. Should there be a clevis on? I, I, there's no clevis on one of those push rods. I don't know if that's important or not. Maybe we have a push rod, clevis in here somewhere. I don't see a clevis. Mm-hmm, maybe it has a different way. Oh yes, it has a different way. It has a little screw in thing. I'll show you when I've built it. I'm not going to bore you with a build video unless you really want one. I'll do one, another one later if you want a build video. I'm going to put it together through the magic of YouTube and then we'll go and fly it. Jump cut now! Okay, excuse the noise in the background. We've got go-karts next door today, but I wasn't going to do a build video. I'm not doing a build video, but I just wanted to cover some of the things that I found during the build process. And first of all, I got a phone call. I was halfway through the build. I got a phone call from 1987 and they said, can we please have our Dean's plug back? Seriously, they put a Dean's connector on this. In 2018, it has a Dean's connector. Oh, that's, um, that's actually not a good thing because if this is if beginners want to buy this, they don't have to mess around soldering. One of the reasons you buy, you plug in flyers so you don't have to solder anything. But you'd be hard pressed, I think, to find a pack with a Dean's connector on it these days, wouldn't you? Oh, never mind. Anyway, so that's one little thing. But here's the other thing. This motor here. Um, I'll hold it up to my microphone. Can you hear that? It's got a squeak. I think it's rubbing on the plastic housing inside. I think there's some, some contact there. That's, not, that's poor quality control. That's not very good. Um, having said that, of course, the AXN had its own set of problems when it came to quality control. Nothing is perfect, so we're not going to be too harsh. I'm not going to judge it too harshly on this, but uh, suffice to say, the tail glued on really easily. It's nicely keyed. You know, you, you, you can't put this on wrong, at least so far I haven't been able to put it on wrong. Um, it's got clever, it's got a horn. Not too you know, impressed by the geometry. They've got this, we try and get this all into shots, it's a bit hard when I'm not sitting at the desk. But you can see, let me pull out a bit, so you can see all the mess. Am I going the right way? Yes, I am. Um, you can see the angle, the 
thing is on the RX and suffered from this a bit, but the geometry means that this the angle of this horn changes quite significantly as the as the rudder turns, and that's just it's just not very nice. But it is there's no way around it if you're going to have a swept back rudder, and the rudder is actually quite small. I don't think that's going to do very much, but we'll find out. Um, elevator has a different setup in here. Um, it doesn't use a clevis; it uses one of those little brassy things, and it's going to be a bit of a pain in the ass to get on. But that's all right. The glue seems to work quite well. Um, so now I'm just going to I'm going to put it on like this. I'm not going to worry about the squeaking because that's where it came. But it says <laughs> The instructions are a little bit lacking. I can see why it says Expert 2. You need to know a little bit about models to put this together because it says put the propeller on. Um, and the problem is that put the spinner and the propeller on, if you do it like they say, well, this little nut is in, it's wound too far out. It came too far out on the shaft. So there wouldn't actually be enough thread to put your propeller on. Yeah, not, not enough. So I'm going to have to wind this in. And it's a lock nut, so I'm going to have to put pliers on here, try not to damage the thread. Again, a little attention to detail. It, this is why it's probably considered more of an expert model because you need to fix stuff as you go. Okay, that was gonna take absolutely forever and I was gonna mangle the shaft, so I've taken the plastic piece off the side and I can see in here where the motor was rubbing. There's a little mark where the motor's rubbing on the plastic piece, so I'm gonna just relieve that a little bit. Not the sort of stuff I'd expect to have to do with a brand new model, but now at least I can get at the motor and it make it easier, I can hold the the outside of the motor while I tighten that down further down so I can put the spinner on. Unnecessary moves um, and very poorly explained in the manual because they just say attach the propeller. <laughs> now I was farting around trying to find a socket to fit on that nut until I realized that because this plastic piece here has a nut shaped portion and it slides over there I can use this as the nut so once I've got access to the the motors uh, out, of, out of rotor I can just hold that and I can turn this until it leaves just the right amount of gap between the plastic cowling and the, and the spinner back plate. So, job done. Okay, so there's the Hawk Sky version 2. Let's summarize what I've discovered. It's, it's quite a well put together piece of kit. Uh, on the plus side, it's just like a slightly bigger AXN and it flies exactly the same way. You need to not launch with too much power and have a bit of elevator ready out of the launch because it will tend to, to nose down a little bit. And when you apply power, it does nose down. When you back off the power, it pops its nose up. These are traits that any high thrust line model 
uh, will give you. Uh, and they're quite manageable. And it is just a joy to fly, whether you're flying fast or just skimming the top of the grass, which I really enjoy doing. It was just a delightful little plane to fly. Now, some of the things I noticed, which I wasn't too chuffed about, was the CG indicator on the instructions. I think it's wrong. They say 55 millimeters back from the rear of the canopy, which puts it almost on the leading edge of the wing, which is crazy stuff. So I positioned my battery so that the center of gravity was over the carbon spar. And flew beautifully. So I don't know where they get that CG position from. And I would recommend if you're going to buy a, a Hawk Sky version 2, you move the CG back a bit to where I recommend it, over that carbon spar, which is you know, just about a quarter of the way back from the leading edge flight. That's pretty normal. That sort of spacing is fairly normal for a model. Flies brilliantly. Um, there wasn't much building to do. They would just glue the horizontal stabilizer, glue the vertical stabilizer on, and it was done. It did take me the best part, well, more than half an hour to get the propeller on the motor. Honestly, seriously, it shouldn't take that long. But the way they've designed this thing and the way it came, it's a faff. I had to take the plastic cowl covers off several times to get things set up. And it's all set up now, that's fine. I'm not looking forward to if I ever break a propeller though, because I'll have to go through the same torturous routine. I wish they could have kept it simple. The accent's great because the putting a new propeller on was simply a case of grabbing the second propeller and, and the second O-ring and putting it on and you're done. It was it's so super simple. This, it's, it looks very nice. The, the cowled motor area looks really nice. The spinner looks really nice. But uh, I don't know, I think I'd like simplicity if that was at all possible. Um, what else did I notice? The, oh, the wings are removable. Well, let's get on to the good things. Let's talk about the good things. We always like to talk about the good things. First of all, it's more spacious than the AXN. You can put a um, 2200 battery in there and there's room to spare. Uh, which means you can, you can put a flight controller on there and lots of FPV gear if you wanted to. And my battery's working, is it? Oh, yes. <laughs> Just checking. Um, you can put a flight controller on there and um, other stuff if you wanted to. No real problem at all. It's got a lot of space. It's got more wing area, so it's actually a little, it'll fly probably a little slower than the AXN. I didn't notice it drop a wing tip at any stage when I was provoking it quite hard. So that's really, really good. It doesn't seem quite as clean through the air, but but I didn't put the plastic canopy on mine because I want to put FPV equipment in it. So I, I left the plastic canopy off. With the canopy on, it may be a little bit more slippery than without it, obviously. So that was pretty good going. And I say the wings are removable. Yes, you don't have to glue them together. They have little plastic catches. And although that's a very, very tight fit on the carbon, the pultruded carbon spar, you can get them on and off. So it makes it much more convenient to transport because you can basically take the wings off and put them side by side, really fit it into a much smaller space. Uh, so if you've got a small car, excellent. That makes a lot of difference. But getting back to some of the other things, I noticed the ESC was not calibrated. It was quite bad. I had to get about a quarter throttle on before the motor would spin. That's a simple process. And we, you've, you've got that big A3 sheet of ESC instructions. So do recalibrate the ESC. There was also no brake on the ESC. So things that could be set up out of the factory to make a beginner's life easy. Maybe this is why it's expert category two for this model, because they expect you to do all the stuff yourself. But if they, if they fine tune that, it would be a much better model for the very beginner. Having said that though, it's still a great model for beginners. I didn't try it with the wheels because why would you put wheels on a model like that? It's just, there's no point to it. So I've, it, and it lands and takes off so well on the grass. You don't need wheels. Absolutely not. So to wrap it up, yes, I think that the Hawk Sky version two would be a worthy successor to the now dead AXN. Um, it isn't an AXN, but it does have some really good characteristics. And if you've flown an AXN, you'll just love the way this thing flies. So yeah, yeah, go for it. And if you live in New Zealand, whoa, lucky old you, because this thing's on special at the moment, I gather. Um, it's, uh, if you check around, you'll find it on special. And I know a number of people have just bought them because I've seen the one at the field today that I was reviewing. So yeah, I'll get them while you can, I suppose. Yeah, I, I like them. I, I like them a lot. I say they're not perfect, but they'll do me pretty good. Hawk, and much better than the version one, trust me. So the uh, Hawk Sky version two, it gets a thumbs up from me. And you'll probably see it a lot more in the videos that I make on my extra channel. So that's it. You've got questions, comments, put them in the usual place and I'll do my best to answer them. In the meantime, thank you for watching and thank you to my Patreon supporters. Make all this possible. And uh, so I'll leave you with some flight footage from the Hawk Sky. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.
Uh, special guest star Ron today on the channel. And Ron, what do you what do you uh, believe? What do you think of this plane? You just flown it. This hawk spot. It's hawk's all sky. white. It's all white. Yeah, it's yeah. all white. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and flying characteristics? Oh, it flies just like an AXN, really. So it could be the new AXN. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. If you painted AXN on it, it, yeah, it could be the new AXN. But yeah, quite predictable, quite good handling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well yeah. I think the truth and the testimony of that is if it's still in one piece and Ron's flown it several times now. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. that's excellent. And it takes off without its wheels. It does, those wheels. wheels. Forget those, waste yeah. of space. Yeah. yeah. But no, it flies really well. And you've heard it from Ron, he yeah. wouldn't lie. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. The new AXN is born. Yeah.